Hello everyone, welcome back. Let us continue our discussion on meta model based reliability analysis and the topic today is response surface method. In this ninth module, we have uh, two earlier classes and there in the first class we uh, studied uh, least square approach and then orthogonal polynomials. So, in this lecture, we are going to first use uh, least square based approximation and using that we will first create a meta model and then using that meta model we will go for reliability analysis. Now, let us uh, quickly revisit uh, the least square approach that we uh, have already discussed in detail. So, we have uh, in observations in case of uh, least square curve fitting. So, we have all these x i y i where i ranging from 1 to n and then uh, we propose a model. Let us start with a linear model. So, we have y i equal to a plus b x i plus this is the error we have corresponding to every observation. So, we fit a model. The moment we do that, the difference between this model and the observation, y i is the observation. So, this is the model, the linear model. So, difference between these two is basically the error and that is what is reflected here. So, we have a set of uh, independent variable. So, in this case, we have only 1 x. So, that is the independent variable here. So, we have a dependent variable that is what we call observation and then uh, the model is a plus b x that is what we fit and then we have some modeling error. Now, our main objective in the least square as estimation is to find out a and b and for that we define error terms for every x i so that we can easily do it just by taking the difference between the observation and the model. So, we evaluate the model at x y that you can see on your screen and then using that model we can estimate the error and then square it up and then sum it up and that is what we get capital S which is a function of uh, a and b. Now, the known quantity on the right hand side you can see is x i and y i. So, our objective is to optimize this function that means minimize the error and that is what we do by using the differentiation of s with respect to a and b. The moment we do that we first get an expression of a in terms of the uh, mean of the data set. So, x bar and y bar are the mean of the data set and using that we can construct this a and then b also we can derive this expression. So, that is how we develop this model a plus b a. And then uh, if you just go through the graphical representation. So, uh, this is just an example where we measure say hydrocarbon level in percentage and corresponding oxygen purity in percentage. So, these are just the data set. So, we have x and y and then uh, this blue dots are basically the observations and through that we basically fit a straight line and every point we have this uh, difference between the observed data and the model and that is what is our error. Now, we can fit a polynomial uh, up to x to the power n. This is obviously not the orthogonal polynomial that we will discuss separately, but for the time being we have a polynomial with uh, n minus n plus 1 coefficients in this case. It is starting from a naught up to a n. So, it has n plus 1 coefficients and then uh, the details of this uh, you can refer this uh, note and then uh, you can go through the uh, how to fit this model. Now, we derive this expression for a naught and a 1 in the first class of module 9. So, if we divide numerator and denominator say by um, n, we can uh, simplify this expression with this uh, sigma x y and sigma x x that is the um, 1 by n times summation of x y will be sigma x y and then similarly if it is 1 by n summation of x square, then this will be sigma x x. So, that is how the simplified expression we have got and then using the estimate of b, we can easily find out what is the estimate of a. So, in this format, it is this a and b are nothing but a naught and a 1. So, we can fit a straight line. Now, the moment we fit that straight line, just look at this uh, schematic diagram. So, what we have here uh, is these blue dots are basically the observation that comes from the actual physical process. So, uh, we measure the hydrocarbon levels and uh, oxygen purity and that is how we uh, get these blue dots. 
Now, there may be a complex model behind that, uh, the depending upon the hydrocarbon level, the oxygen purity changes and there may be a complex model, but the moment we fit this straight line, you see, uh, we don't need that complex uh, physical phenomenon. We can just focus on this uh, pink line, which is uh, an equation of a straight line. And um, this equation may be valid within a domain. As you can see in this case, it is between 0.87 to 1.67. But within these domain, once we fit a model, then we can work on that model and leave that actual uh, physical model between oxygen purity and hydrocarbon level uh, aside. And then uh, instead of that, we can use this pink model as the new uh, model over which we can apply all our mathematical operations. And that's the reason it is called meta model. This is not an actual model. So, we are going to use that in our um, reliability analysis. And for that, again, we have already discussed why we need reliability analysis because we are dealing with an implicit performance function where we cannot evaluate gradient because we do not know in explicit form. And that's the reason we cannot estimate gradient, although still numerically we can do, but uh, uh, that we do not prefer for all valid reason. And that's the reason we, uh, in this uh, module, try to develop a response surface. So for that, let us start with an example and then through that example we will see how we can construct this meta model using least square approach and then uh, once we have that model how we can utilize that for reliability analysis so this problem again we discussed many a times so this is uh, this example is taken from haldar mahadevan's book so we will use this example to construct the meta model and we'll see how that helps us to evaluate the reliability although uh, let me just clarify one issue at the very beginning that in this case we know the limit state in explicit form so we can easily go for first order reliability analysis but this example is taken to demonstrate step by step how the meta model or response surface is actually first uh, constructed and then using that how can we estimate the reliability index because we want to compare the results and make sure that the response surface gives us the correct answer and that's the reason we are using this expression otherwise uh, in reality, this response surface method is used for GX, which is uh, uh, implicitly defined. So, in this case, uh, we propose a quadratic expression. You can see on your screen. So, we put G hat. G hat means the original limit state is G. So, we put G hat, which will replace this original expression because we propose an expression a plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus c1 x1 square plus c2 x2. So, it is a quadratic equation in terms of x1 and x2 and it has certain coefficients. In this case, how many coefficients we have? We have a, b1, b2, c1, c2. So, altogether five coefficients we have. So, we have to evaluate that those five coefficients from the um, least square approach that we are going to adopt in a minute. Now, these are the unknowns we are going to solve. So, altogether in this case, we have five unknowns. So, if we have say n terms in this uh, expression, so if we have a constant term say a, then plus b1 x1, b2 x2 up to b n x n, then c1 x1 square, c2 x2 square, then up to c n x n square, then we have altogether 2 n plus 1. So, in this case, n equal to 2, that is the reason we have five unknowns. So, in general, uh, we can have 2n plus 1 exp, uh, unknown coefficients in this quadratic model, depending upon the number of random variables we have in our uh, limit state definition. So, in this case, because we have two random variables, fy and z, that means x1 and x2. So, in the limit state function uh, that we replace with this uh, g hat, uh, there also we have two random variables, you see x1, x2, and we have uh, the linear term and the quadratic term for those two random variables along with a constant. Now, the question is, uh, if we want to solve this uh, constants, in this case, a, b1, b2, c1, c2, then we have to generate uh, those uh, points and we have to generate that many equations 
and then once we have that uh, many simultaneous equation we can solve the equation to find out these uh, unknown constants. Now in the least square we can have uh, a large number of equations more than uh, the number of unknowns we have in this case number of unknowns 2n plus 1. So at least we need 2n plus 1 simultaneous equation to solve this uniquely. We can have more than that and then in that case we will um, optimize the error. But for the time being if we can generate 2n plus 1 equation then we can uniquely solve this um, expression for g hat x. So that is the reason what we do. Our proposal is we will generate 2n points in and around the mean point. So mean is the reference point. Why we consider mean as our starting point? Because that represents the central tendency of our data. So that is the reason we always prefer to start with the mean point. So in and around mean uh, we will generate 2n points and that is how we will get altogether 2n plus 1 because including mean we will have 2n plus 1. So that is how we will generate those points and then at those points we will solve original limit set equation. So and then we will get the response and then we will solve this equation that I will explain in a minute. Now <coughs> these are the points that we generate. So we have mean in this case it is a problem with two random variables. So we have mu1 and mu2 so that is the uh, reference point and in and around we have mean plus minus k sigma. So this k is a scalar constant. So you have on the right hand side mu1 plus k sigma1 comma mu2. So that is one point. Similarly, we generate other points. So we have altogether two n points. So n equal to 2. So altogether four points we have uh, surrounding mean point. So that is how we basically develop 2n plus 1 uh, reference point. We call them support points. At this point, we will solve the original case. In this case, we have this closed form expression that we will solve. Or if you have, uh, say, for example, a finite element model, so we can solve finite element model to find out what is the value of gx and using that value, then we can fit this curve. So that is the procedure. Now, obviously, those five points uh, in and around mean points are listed here. So in our original problem statement the mean value for fy was 38 and uh, sorry this will be z. So mean value for uh, oh sorry it is okay. So mean value for z is 54. So that is the starting point. So we use that as our uh, reference point and in and around that we generate uh, four more points. Now at those points for example it, if it is 38 and 54 then we can put this expression here in the original limit state to find out what is the value of gx and that is what is listed in this row. Now as I said in this case we have a uh, explicit performance function just to make sure that we have the same results that we get from the other reliability analysis but in reality we will have a finite element model or uh, any other uh, form of uh, implicit performance function in that case we have to solve just by substituting these values in the function and then we can get this gx. Now this comes from the original limit state that is the reason we do not put hat here simply because it is the outcome of the limit state expression when we put the values of the random variable what we call support point. So we start with the mean as our first support point and then we have 2n uh, support point surrounding main point and that is how we get these values. So all of them altogether they form 2n plus 1 uh, support points. Now this k is a scalar constant we can set different values normally um, say mean plus 1 sigma or 2 sigma or 3 sigma that is how we can actually expand the region in and around mean to generate these support points. Now we have altogether 5 unknowns. So we have 5 simultaneous equations. So on the left hand side these values are known. So we will fit those values uh, in our meta model and then we have this uh, x matrix. So this is again known to us. Our only unknown is uh, A, A, B1, B2 and C1, C2. So that we can solve very easily and in this case uh, the moment we solve this we get this constant values and the moment we have that we can construct g hat in terms of the constant that we obtain after solving this simultaneous equations.
Now, once we have this g hat x, then you can see, now we have a closed form expression in terms of x1 and x2, then we can, uh, uh, I mean, forget this original expression and we can uh, find out the gradient based on this new g hat that we fit based on the support points that we generate. Now, those are the support points and then uh, we have uh, a set of observations. So, in this case, you see the problem statement, the way we construct is that we have m unknowns and then we construct same number of equations. So, we have in this case 5 unknowns. So, we construct 5 equations and that is how we solve this. But in any case, if we have uh, less number of equations than the number of unknowns, then we cannot uniquely solve for the constant. On the other hand, if we have more number of equations than the number of unknowns, then in that case, still we can solve it. Uh, that is not an issue. But we will have a unique solution when these two are equal. So, in this case, we have 5 unknowns, 5 simultaneous equations. So, you can uniquely solve this problem. Now, so this is the model again for the same problem. You can see earlier we considered 5 unknowns. So, I just uh, have a different notation in some of the books actually uh, or some papers they use this notation. So, that is the reason uh, I use this beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 and then beta 1, 1, 2, 2 and 1, 2. Uh, but do not get confused this beta is not the reliability index. This is the constant coefficient. Now, in this meta model say yk equal to in this form, we have quadratic terms up to this point we considered in the previous model. But in this model, we have one uh, extra term that is the cross term. So, sometimes this cross term also improves the quality of the uh, uh, meta model. So, we can uh, consider this depending upon the problem we have. So, in this case, again, we can write down this in the matrix form. So, we have y equal to x times beta is the model and then plus we have a modeling error. Now, in this case, we have one extra term. As we increase the number of random variable, we will have extra cross term. <coughs> so, depending upon the number of unknowns, at least that many equations we have to construct before we can solve. So, in this case, we have the observations that is the y vector, which for the timing we solve from the limit state and get these values. Then we have x that is the uh, matrix we construct based on the support points, and then we have unknowns beta and we have error. And the moment we have this. Uh, we can construct sum of uh, square of errors in this format. So, it will be epsilon transpose uh, epsilon. So, that if we expand and then finally, by optimizing, we can get the coefficients. So, capital S will be in this case y minus x times beta transpose y minus x times beta. So, that is what we get just by uh, taking this model on the other side, left hand side and just uh, I mean express error in terms of observations and the model. So, this expression if we expand, then we get this quantity and that is what we have to minimize to get the values of coefficient in this case that is beta. So, we have this uh, expression finally, once we open this bracket and apply this transpose. So, we get this expression and then we can simplify it further because there are similar terms. So, we differentiate s with respect to beta and equate it to 0 and the moment we do that, 
we get this expression from this previous expression of s. So, we minimize this expression, so differentiate with respect to beta and then equate it to 0, we finally get this term and then uh, we get the simultaneous equations, uh, you can see and then finally, we get the estimate of beta and in this case again, uh, that is the expression we get from least square estimate. So, that is how we develop the model. So, once we have this beta, then our model y equal to x times beta. So, that is the model we can construct. So, effectively what we have, if we just develop this schematic diagram, so we have x1 and x2 in this case, in this example. So, we start with the mean point, then in and around mean point, we develop 2n number of points. So, we have the original gx equal to 0 that demarcates the safe and unsafe region. And then uh, instead of this green line, what we do, we first find out the value of gx, which is the result of this uh, limit state function when we substitute the values of x1 and x2, that means the coordinates of this support point. Then we get the g and that if we use in this relation, we find out beta and from that beta we get this quadratic expression. So, the dotted line is either we call it g hat x or r x. Sometimes we call it r x. R stands for the response surface. So, this is the response surface that we fit in place of this original limit state. Now, in this case again, we have an explicit performance function. So, that is the reason we have this, but in case of implicit performance function also, we can evaluate for every possible values of x1 and x2. So, we can plot this green line and we can also plot this uh, dotted line. So, that dotted line is nothing but the response surface. This R stands for the response surface. Now, we use this uh, model as the expression for this response surface, either g hat x or r x, whichever way we express it. Then, instead of working on this g x, we work on this r x and then solve the reliability problem. So, now this uh, r x that we fit, it is having a closed form expression. And the moment we have this closed form expression, we can differentiate this uh, uh, limit surface, which is r x or g hat x. And then the moment we can differentiate that, uh, we can uh, find out the gradient. Now, we have used second order polynomial. So, this function uh, is twice differentiable if the need be. So, we can also invoke um, SOM for this model and we can go for correction, curvature corrections on top of first order reliability index. Now, <coughs> this Rx, as I said, Rx replaces the original limit state. So, instead of working on that, we can now work on this Rx. So, this is the generic expression for a second order response surface. You can see on your screen. So, A0 is the first uh, component that is the DC component of this expression and then we have uh, summation uh, i equal to 1 to n uh, b i x i and c i x i square. Note in this expression we do not have cross terms. I will show that in a minute. So, you can augment this uh, uh, expression for response surface with the cross term also, but for the time being if we consider even this uh, quadratic expression, then we know in close form how this Rx is related to all Xi's. So, we can effectively differentiate this. Our task is first to find out this constant A, B i and C i. So, we have again in this case altogether 2 n plus 1, 1 coming from this uh, second and third component of this function on the right hand side and one constant. So, altogether it is 2 n plus 1. So, our task is to develop 2n plus 1 simultaneous equation and that is what I have already explained. Uh, we start with the mean point and in and around we generate 2n points and then that is how we can construct 2n plus 1 simultaneous equation. Now, there are different support point generation schemes. As we progress in this course, I will also discuss that. But for the time being, uh, if we have 2n plus 1 simultaneous equation, then we can uniquely solve all the unknown coefficient in this quadratic expression. So, that is what again we do 
uh, obviously these unknown coefficients uh, they are uh, they should be derived in such a way that uh, the error in estimation is reduced to its uh, minimum and then uh, of course uh, as we progress we will see there are different versions of uh, this response surface we can in place of this algebraic polynomial we can use any other polynomial and in fact uh, as we progress we will see we will use orthogonal polynomials also to construct this response surface. Now again uh, reliability problem when we have this response surface Rx equal to 0 is a iterative procedure. So, we start with this uh, mean as our reference point. So, that, that is the first starting point and uh, you will see as we progress in the next iteration we will uh, find out the optimal point on this dotted line and we will use that as our reference point and in and around that we will again generate 2n plus uh, 2n points. So, altogether anyway we will have 2n plus 1 point and that is how we are going to solve this uh, problem. So, the Rx that we get is using a numerical fit. So, in and around the reference point, we fit the surface and the moment we do that, then we can use that. Now, here I want to mention one thing. It is not necessary that we have to always fit a quadratic polynomial. We can go for higher order polynomial also. However, uh, let us start with quadratic polynomial simply because at least for second order reliability analysis, we should have a performance function or a limit state that is twice differentiable. And in many cases, a quadratic polynomial uh, can fit the response surface quite well in and around the reference point. Uh, remember, we need to just fit within the region where we have the influence of this point. It, this Rx may not fit the complete Gx over the complete domain. But we do not need that also simply because we need uh, only the failure region and there if we fit it quite well, then using that information we can estimate the reliability. Of course, there are other options for fitting curves. So, we can consider the complete domain and part by part we can actually fit the complete surface and that will be a much better approximation. But for the time being, if we consider a quadratic polynomial and uh, using that quadratic polynomial, if we try to estimate the reliability, we will see for most of the problem, we can estimate it with uh, a significant level of accuracy. So, what we do? We start with the uh, implicit limit state and then we develop 2n plus 1 equations and then we find out Rx. Now, the moment we know Rx, then we can invoke uh, first order reliability analysis to find out the design point Xd. So, this is using uh, the known uh, Lagrangian approximations that we have already derived. So, obviously, uh, if we start with that, what you can see, we start with this, the original expression is the green line then we fit this Rx which is the dotted line and then the moment we fit this dotted line over that we can find out this blue dot which is basically the design point. Now, <coughs> the moment we fit Rx invariably we are going to have some amount of modeling error and that is the reason uh, this is not the true design point because true design point should be on the limit state for example, say this blue dot, yellow dot, sorry. So, instead of uh, this, we get a different design point. The reason is we work on this response surface, which is having some modeling error epsilon that we always try to minimize. Now, the question is uh, how we can uh, find out this uh, yellow point that is the design point on the limit state function using the information that we have already received. That means, we solve this blue dot that is xd that is the design point and then the actual design point xn must be on the limit state that is on the green line that we can I mean estimate using 
Lagrange interpolation. So that is what the expression you can see on your screen. So this is from the interpolation formula. So we have this 0 point, we have this xn and x, uh, sorry, xd and xn point. Now at this point, xn obviously the value of the limit state function must be equal to 0 and that information if we use we can derive this expression. This uh, interpolation formula I leave it as an exercise for you. You can easily uh, derive this expression. It is not a difficult task. So give it a try. If not uh, uh, we will um, show you during our online uh, interactions. So that is how we actually solve this problem. So we start with a limit state function that we replicate with this Rx, we call it response surface. The moment we have it, we then find out the design point on this Rx and then we use interpolation formula to find out this design point on the limit state. Now that completes one iteration. So the moment we have this uh, Xn that is the yellow dot, then in and around that yellow dot again we generate uh, two endpoints again repeat that exercise and if you perform that a few times obviously we will get um, the converged value of uh, actual design point and the moment we have that final design point that we can use to estimate beta. Now normally uh, in two iterations we get the results simply because uh, the moment we apply this interpolation formula, we bring it over the limit state function and that is the reason uh, normally two iterations enough, but there is no uh, restriction. We can uh, continue the iteration uh, unless and until the value of beta is converged. But if you have say two iterations, then in the first iteration, we have 2n plus 1 support point. Then in the second iteration, we will again have 2n plus 1 support points and then finally we have to evaluate this uh, limit state for the final case using this uh, interpolation formula. So, you will see uh, in two iterations altogether we have to solve 4n plus 3 number of times the limit state equation and that is how we basically fit the limit state that we call response surface. So, what are the steps if we start with? We first generate the support points for that uh, if we have a quadratic polynomial without cross term then we have 2n plus 1 number of unknowns. So that many simultaneous equations we have to generate. So we generate uh, 2n plus 1 support points so that we start with mean as our reference and then in and around mean we develop 2n more points using this relation mu i plus minus k sigma. Normally k equal to 3 is considered so that we cover a region mean plus minus 3 sigma. But uh, this value of k can be changed as per your need and that is actually up to the designer. So depending upon the problem, if we consider a bigger region obviously we need more iterations to fit if the uh, limit state is really very sensitive. Otherwise uh, we can consider mean plus minus 3 sigma to cover a wider region. So once we have those uh, 2n plus 1 support points, then we can uh, solve the limit state function which originally may be implicit and in that case we solve that and then once we have it, we can fit the polynomial to find out the constant in this case a, b i and c i provided we have no cross term. Obviously, the moment we incorporate cross term, we need more simultaneous equation to solve the uh, set of unknowns. So, once we have the unknowns estimated, then we can construct this response surface, which is an approximated uh, surface that is a replica of the original limit state function, obviously in and around the region covered by this support point. <coughs> then once we have the response surface ready that we can use for further estimation. So the moment we construct the response surface, we use first order reliability analysis on the response surface Rx, not on the original uh, expression because that is what we cannot. The simple reason being the limit state is implicit. And once we solve this problem, we get 
the first design point on Rx, which is obviously not the ex exact point on the original limit state because of the modeling error and that we can modify using interpolation formula. And the moment we do that, we repeat this process and then complete this uh, exercise unless and until the convergence is achieved. So, this flowchart shows nicely how this algorithm goes. So, what we do? We start, we use mean as our reference point. We generate two endpoints in and around mean as you can see in this diagram. Then at those points, we then fit the response surface. For that, we calculate the coefficient and fit the response surface. The moment we have Rx, that is this dotted line, then using uh, first order reliability method, we can solve the design point that is here. Now then we evaluate the limit state again at this point, obviously that is not equal to 0. If not, then what we do, we go for interpolation, and then find out this xn and then uh, we go back to this original expression and then repeat this procedure unless uh, we achieve a 0 value of the limit state. That is where the estimation converges. So, once we have convergence, then we consider that final design point as the design point where we estimate beta. Now, in this case, uh, one point you can notice out of this discussion is that we first get the design point directly and then at that design point after this interpolation formula at that design point we estimate beta. So, let us uh, take an example, the same example we have considered. So, what we will do? We, we can consider quadratic or sometimes we can also top it up with the cross term as you can see on your screen. So, this is the cross term, but if we include cross term, obviously remember that we have additional unknowns for that we need additional support points. So, support point generation scheme I will show you uh, separately, but for the time being, uh, this information is enough that the moment you consider cross term, you will have some additional coefficients on top of the quadratic term that we already have here. So, this will demand for more number of simultaneous equation and that uh, must be obtained from more number of support points. So, that is the only difference. Otherwise, uh, mathematically it is all the same. The task is to find out all these constant. The moment we have cross term, in this case our constants are A, B i, C i and D i j. D i j is the constant between the two random variables x i and x j. However, in this case also the moment we solve these constants, we know the R x in closed form. So, we can differentiate this expression and find out the gradient. So, we can easily apply first order reliability method in this case. So, we consider this example. In fact, uh, I will show you the MATLAB code also. Then we will solve this example. This we take from the Alder Madhavan's book. Uh, so, the this value of sigma z is slightly different in the book. It is 5.4. I will uh, consider that also to show you whether we get the exact results or not. So, in this case, we consider k equal to 3. That means, we cover mean plus minus 3 sigma g. And based on that, we solve, we go for three iterations, although we could stop after two iterations, but in the third iteration also, we have some improvement. As I said, there is no restriction that you have to stop after second iteration. You can go as many iterations you need to reduce the error in estimation. Now, in this case, you can see in the first iteration, we have a set of five points. These are the support points. Based on that, we estimate beta and the design point xn. Using that as the reference point, we generate 2n more points. So, these are the support points in the second iteration. Then again, we estimate beta and the design point and then that we use for the reference point in third iteration and in and around that reference point, we generate 2n more points and then finally, the result is converged. So, in this case, our estimate beta is 4.2614 and corresponding pf you can see on your screen. Now, we will use the exact numerical values given in Haldar Mahadevan's book and the moment we will develop uh, 
uh, MATLAB code, we will uh, use that code to solve that problem and compare the results with whatever reported in the book. But at least this example shows you that how these support points you can see as we increase uh, the iterations from first iteration to third iteration, you can see we started from the mean point. So those are the 2n plus 1 point. So in the next iteration, we go to a new design point that is here. So in and around that, we generate uh, four more points because in this case, we have a quadratic uh, polynomial with five unknowns. So we develop five points. Then from there, we go to the next point here. And then in the third iteration, we generate again two end points in and around this uh, central reference point. So that's how the logic goes. So we start from the mean point and gradually we converge to the design point. So if we consider a different example, so in this case we have again uh, two random variables, but uh, these are the PDFs of the limit state. So what we do in this case, we calculate beta in three different iterations and you can see on your screen, these are the way the beta is converged. So that's the limit state function. The original limit state is the blue line and you can see in every iteration how this limit state is approximated by the response surface. So every iterations are marked along with the design point in every iteration. So we start from this point in the first iteration. As we gradually progress, we ultimately come to the converged value. So you can see how this limit state function is replicated by this response surface method. So that's how we solve this using response surface. Now, if we consider uh, a problem where we have a correlated case, that also we can solve using response surface method. So we have in this case a serviceability limit state where the deformation at the free end we consider as the uh, basis for this limit state. So we have a allowable deformation and then applied deformation and then difference between these two is the limit state where we have two loads P1 and P2 and they have a correlation also. In this case again we uh, start with the mean as our reference point and the properties of the random variable you can see on your screen. And in this case, again, uh, we can construct the response surface and in two iterations, we have solved this because this is a linear limit state. Uh, there was no I mean, change up to fourth decimal point. So after second iteration, it is it has converged and that value we can uh, use as our design point. So we increase the number of random variable. In this case, again, we go back to the plastic design at the support, but we have two loads and the loads are also correlated. So this problem, again, we can solve in a similar way using limits uh, response surface method. So we have altogether four random variables. So we consider mean as our reference point in the at the beginning. And then using that, we um, construct the response surface. And on top of that, we apply first order reliability method and gradually in third iteration, again in this case, the um, value of beta converges to a value of 3.9035. So this clearly shows how we can actually use response surface to solve reliability problem. Okay, once we uh, solve those examples, now let us uh, try to solve them in MATLAB. So what we'll do uh, we will develop a MATLAB code for this response surface method. But before that, let me quickly go through the key equations. So uh, we have this basic uh, model for least square curve fitting. So we have these are the observations equal to the model that we fit. In this case, we have a linear model plus the error. Now, uh, this is a linear model. Obviously, in our case, we uh, have a response surface which is quadratic without cross term. So we have a constant plus bi xi plus ci xi square. Now, uh, in this case, we have altogether 2n plus 1 unknowns and we generate support points. So exactly same number of support points are generated. And then if we uh, write down that expression in matrix form, so what we have here in this uh, uh, set of simultaneous equation. So on the left hand side, we have these values 
uh, we find out at those set of says this is the first support point capital x1 then second support point third support point and this way 2n plus 1 support points we generate and then we uh, use those values to find out the observations on the left hand side so this is equal to the model so this this part plus there will be some error we don't need to write that because we have exactly same number of uh, equations as many unknowns we have uh, we will not use the uh, least square approach that approach you can see here so if you have a least square approach then we find out the SSE and then that we uh, optimize with respect to the unknown coefficient beta and finally this is the expression for the least square estimate of uh, this beta hat which is the coefficient but in our case we have altogether uh, 2n plus 1 unknowns and that we can find out using matrix inversion directly. So, what we have to construct is first the support points and then at those support points we will find out the response uh, that is the observation and then we have to construct this A matrix based on the support point. So, first column is 1 and then uh, the first order term and then second order term. So, this A matrix we have to construct. The moment we do that, we can then find out the unknown coefficients using matrix inversion. And then finally, we will solve this uh, cantilever problem where the mean and standard deviation of the random variables, uh, we know this is uh, Fy times Z minus 1140, that is the problem. Uh, and this mean and standard deviation values are kept exactly same. This problem we uh, take it from Haldar Madhavan's book and the this value we will see whether we can estimate this value using response surface method. So, that is what we are going to demonstrate now. So, for that let us first develop a, a MATLAB code. So, what I do I keep this reference beside. So, what we do we develop a function we call it response surface. So, RSM is the function. So, the input is mean and then sigma and then this f that is to generate support point mean plus minus k sigma we I mean define it as f here. So, first what we do we define the tolerance limit. So, 1 e minus 3 is the tolerance then the number of iterations in beta estimation and then we also set a n rack that is the number of iterations in rack width algorithm. So, we set it relatively large number. Then we start with the mean as our reference point. So, we will generate support points in and around mean. So, that is the first starting point. So, the number of random variables then we find out. And then we initiate beta that is the reliability index. So, initial value is 0. We will update as we um, go through iteration. So, we start the iteration. Now, we generate the support point. The first reference point is the mean. Then, we will construct two end points in and around for that. So, now we generate 2n plus 1 points. First point is already generated that is the mean.
then mean plus f times or k times in our <laughs> slides we used k so mean plus k sigma is generated similarly we generate mean minus k sigma So the support points are generated. So these are the 2n plus 1 support points. Then we have to solve um, the limit state at these support points. But before that, uh, we have to generate this x matrix so this uh, known matrix at the support point that we will do first So we have to develop all the components so first we populate all the elements with one and then we uh, update from second column onward so in this case we have so first order terms will be from second column to n plus one column so that's what we generate now
So what we do here, we generate the first column as one, and then actually first populate every elements with one, and then automatically the first column is one, and then uh, second column onward up to n plus one, uh, we have first order term, and then second order term uh, for the remaining columns. So that's how we construct this matrix. So once that is done, now we solve the limit state. So for that, we have a limit state function. There we just pass this information that is XSM, that is the support point. So at these support points, we solve this G and we will get this uh, G hat evaluated at these support points. So we have altogether 2n plus 1 support points. So that many values of limit state we'll get. Now once we have it, we can directly solve for this uh, unknown constants. So we go for matrix inversion because we have exactly same number of simultaneous equation as many unknowns we have. Otherwise, in these line, if we have more number of support points and we go for limit state, we have to actually um, perform this um, limit state es estimation for this unknown coefficients using least square approximation. So that is the only difference for the time being. Once we have this coefficient, so let me just put a note here. So unknown coefficients and then we go for Rackwitz algorithm. But this time we apply Rackwitz algorithm on the response surface that we generate. So before we solve for beta, so let us initialize the values. So we have an initial beta and final beta and then we will find out the difference between them to verify convergence. So we have a second loop for Rackwitz algorithm. So now we first generate the response surface. So this is the expression of response surface, that is what we generate now. So that is the expression for response surface. So let me have a note here. So that is the response surface. Then
this is in the original space so we have to go to the standard normal space for that we have to subtract mean and divide it by the sigma so we are in the standard normal space now then we define the first beta that is the initial beta then we estimate the gradient Of course, I am writing a general code, that is the reason we have this uh, row and column numbers. What I will suggest you please verify yourself. Once we develop this code and just run it and make sure that all the dimensions and everything are okay as per this model we have developed. So, here it will be 2n plus 1 and then so that is the gradient we have estimated. You can see this expression here that is what we have estimated for the complete data set. <coughs> Excuse me. So now what we do? So, we estimate the new design point at this stage. You can identify this expression. This is using Newton Raphson's algorithm. So, once we have the new design point, Then we first find out beta and then convert that into the original space. That is how the algorithm goes. So, 
So then we check the convergence. So first, we check the convergence of beta. If that is the case, convergence is achieved, then we complete the loop. Then recall in this response surface, we have to go for updation of this design point because this is based on Rx response surface. So, we have to apply that interpolation formula to find out the design point on the limit surface. Of course, this matrix notation I have already uh, estimated before I start writing this code. You just also verify for a generic case at your end and if you have any trouble in doing so, do let us know and then we will explain it further. Sorry, there is a syntax error. So the new design point, we estimate it in the original space that is mu plus sigma times the point E estimate from the previous equation. So now at this point, we have to apply the interpolation formula. If you recall,
so that is the gx at mean and then we have to estimate the same at the design point so we can copy this expression and instead of mean we have to use xt then we apply interpolation formula if we have So there is a mistake here, so it should be if GD is greater than GM, If that is not the case, then our xm will be equal to xd. We can copy this expression and modify. <laughs> So, now the estimation is done. So, we have the XM. So, we just put that value as the next reference point and then close the iteration. So, once that is done, we can estimate PF which is 0.5 the same way we did earlier when we solved Rackwitz algorithm. So it is using error function. And that completes 
the main code response surface so we save it then we develop a separate function file for the limit state so we have function it will give us the gx values so the moment we have this support points given we can solve the limit state values so this will be the number of support points we have that we estimate at this first line and then for every support point we solve the value of the limit state for that we define a for loop and then we define the random variables So we have altogether two random variables in this case and then gx equal to x1 x2 minus 1140. So we close this. Now the limit state is also ready. So we save that function and then we develop a main file. define mean values that is 38 and 54 then standard deviation which is 3.8 and 5.4 we keep the values same exactly the one reported in the book so then this limit we consider 3 and then once we do that, we can solve for the reliability index. This name will be in capital because the function name is in capital. So RSM. And then we define mean, sigma, and then t. So let us run this code. What you can see, we get the value of beta, which is exactly same, 3.6012. So that's how we solve the reliability index. So this code gives you fairly good idea about the uh, way we develop the response surface code. Of course, these days we have a well-developed MATLAB toolbox. So using curve fitting toolbox also you can do it. But uh, I thought to demonstrate step by step so that you can correlate the model that we develop uh, in the theory and then use the same model to solve the reliability index. So that uh, code now you can make it uh, a generalized version because you can consider say the cross term you can consider more number of support points and then instead of solving directly using inversion you can go for this least square and as we progress we will see we will go for even advanced version of least square.
to solve this uh, reliability problem. So, uh, with that, I, I, I hope you can extend this code for um, other problems that we have already solved. But every time you see, uh, you, you can compare your results with other um, solutions that we developed using say gradient based or, or simulation based reliability analysis. So, with that, let us close here uh, and then we will go to the next uh, module. Uh, and then there we will see how we can uh, solve the same problem using uh, stochastic response surface and other advanced version of response surface. Thank you very much.